G'day, this is Ru1. Today we're going to look at the Quit Set Smart Key Gen, Gen 3. This lock is um, different in that you can't uh, apply tension to the pins in the normal way by, by rotating the core. Um, because of the way their manufacturers have constructed this lock, to, you have to apply tension directly to the sidebar. And the sidebar is located in this channel here, down in this channel here. So what we do is we get what I'm going to refer to as a tension pick on top of that, um, into that channel, channel here, and on top of the sidebar which lines along this channel, and directly force the sidebar into the pins to um, bind the pins. Okay. Opening this lock is more an um, exercise in tool making rather than um, being skilled at uh, setting those pins. On the table here are all my efforts at trying to get a tension pick that can um, get into that channel. Now these three here are failures. What I ended up with is these two here. If we have a closer look at them. We have one very thin and one thick. That is um, 0.15 of a millimeter, and this one's 0.3 of a millimeter. Let's get this uh, lock in the vise and we'll see how we do it. Okay, in the vise we have the Quickset Smart Key Gen 3. Uh, the problem with this particular lock is you can't apply binding tension to the, the pins in the normal way. You have to um, actually apply tension to the sidebar directly, push that into the pins to get the pins to bind. Now I do that with a combination of two, what I refer to as um, tension picks. A thin one, which is much easier to get into the channel, which is on the left here. We're in there now. And a thick one which does the actual work but without the guiding, that thin one to guide it, it just can't get into that channel. It can get into the channel to be honest but it can't get on top of the sidebar. It just crashes into the end of the sidebar. Okay that's sitting in the channel on top of the sidebar now. We can actually pull the first thin one out and this one is going to do all the work for us. Let's see how we're going. Yeah. Good one's binding. Two's binding. One and two are binding, three springing. Okay, let's set these. We'll set. Okay. It's really locked up, so to reduce the tension, I can withdraw the um, tension pick a little bit. Just better. Two feel set. Three is springing, so we can push the tension pick in a little bit until three locks up. to four. Five. Got to be very careful not to overset any pins. So I haven't found any good way to get things to drop, pins to drop, other than starting from scratch. I think we've got all those pins set. I'm relatively confident. So what we're going to do now is apply torsional pressure to the core while withdrawing the tension pick. Carefully withdrawing it. And we 
I've got an open. Okay. These locks are not very guttable. I'll show you what I can. rather large clip here which allows the central core to come out Now, I have to be careful. Take it off now. This allows the, um, the central core to come out of its sleeve. Okay. So now we're looking at the, the core itself and the sleeve. see that it's this square channel that's causing the trouble we've got a square a square um, sidebar and it gets locked in this channel when you put normal torsional you know rotational torsion on the the core without putting any pressure inwards which is what we need to do do pressure inwards so let's have a look at this so I said this is only partially guttable. Okay. You can see all the sliders here. And underneath we can see the, the sidebar. If we pull one of those sliders out. There's your sidebar down there. It's engaging all those sliders. Anyway, there's not much else I can do with this lock. It's not very guttable. So let's just call it a day. So that was the Quick Set Smart Key Gen 3. Thanks for watching.